today we're going to talk a little bit about head gaskets uh, and sealing combustion pressure. Uh, this video is going to be long and involved and uh, it's going to drop a few bombshells but I think they're bombshells that deserve to be dropped and uh, that's what I'm going to do. Uh, that's going to happen in the latter part of the video. The first part of the video we're just going to discuss uh, the aforementioned and, and the tech behind uh, all this. How, how we seal combustion pressure while we want to. And the pluses and minuses of the various ways we do that. Um, and first of all let me tell you uh, why uh, um, you might say I have a little bit of expertise in, in understanding this or knowing about it. And that's simply because over the years I've blown a lot of stuff up. <clears throat> um, or nowadays, more so than that, I'm, I see the end results of other people blowing their stuff up. Because um, sooner or later it may end up down here to get repaired or whatever. So long story short, I'm either responsible for a lot of stuff blowing up in the early years or uh, involved in it on the other end nowadays. Um, and because of that, over a period of time, you learn quite a bit of, you know, you, you kind of figure out the, the what and why of how some of this stuff happens. Um, and uh, anyhow, you, you learn a, a thing or two over the years. Uh, and I deal with all kinds of motors, you know, kind of known for turbo motors nowadays, but we do little circle track stuff, sprint cars, pretty much all kinds of stuff. So I've seen, uh, I've seen it from, from multiple angles. Um, so anyhow, head gaskets, the, the purpose of them is so that we can take the cylinder heads off the motor to work on the thing or repair stuff or whatever, right? Um, stock head gaskets are a pretty simple thing. A lot of times there's not really much of a mechanical seal at all. It's just a, a paper gasket with maybe a little wire or a little uh, sheet metal wrapped around the edge of the paper so it doesn't burn. And they're very simple and very effective on a lot of things. Uh, if you look at a stock small block Chevrolet uh, head gasket, you may think, geez, how does this work? Well, as long as you do things right, it works fine. You know, Nowadays, uh, even stock cylinder head, uh, or, uh, uh, head gasket technology has advanced quite a bit, and you don't see stuff like that anymore for the most part. But, um, you know, back in the day, that's, that's all there was, and it worked fine. Um, so you have that. And then the next step up from that, you have some uh, stock style head gaskets that inside that little sheet metal loop around the cylinder, a lot of times there'll be a piece of wire. Um, and the wire uh, could be a different materials depending on what kind of cylinder head you had. Um, used to be that uh, we used a lot of Felpro 1011-2. Uh, uh, seemed like it was a 1011-1 to 1011-2 depending on whether you had an iron cylinder head or a aluminum. And the difference was the thickness or composition of that wire inside. But you never see that wire until you blow the head gasket and then it's kind of hanging out for everybody to look at. Um, and those were a step up from stock. They're more of a mechanical uh, lock or interference in there. More on pressure in the ceiling point, right? After that, um, then we had lock wire gaskets. Same thing but an even thicker wire. Thick enough where you need to cut a little receiver groove in the head to make room for it. Um, and we used those for years. It was a 1006 Ford gasket we used to use all the time. And they worked great. And then I, I haven't seen any of those in years, but a long time ago that's what one of the things that we used. Um, now and then uh, shortly after that I would say that was when uh, the multi-layer steel stuff started to become popular. Um, and I don't know where that I would say it probably came out on factory stuff first. Um, I don't know that for sure, but in the form that we saw it originally was probably comedic stuff. Uh, and it's basically three or more layers of steel. Some of them are kind of corrugated with a, uh, a kind of a simulation of an O-ring. <clears throat> and these work very well on a lot of things. Um, and they were kind of a game changer when they came out because they allowed anybody with a, a good slick deck surface to hold a, a good amount of, uh, you know, 
sonar pressure and not have trouble. That being, that being said, they have their limits. Um, and at some point, uh, they're going to give up and they're not going to work uh, and you have to move on to something else. Uh, nowadays, there's another thing out that uh, we've used a little bit and had pretty good luck with it and for certain situations. And it's now they're called Vulcan. They were called Athena, I believe. I don't know if somebody bought somebody or I don't know. But anyhow, these have a, uh, a steel seal that has three raised, very small lips that push into the cylinder head and form a kind of redund redundant mechanical lock around each cylinder. And then the outside is graphite. Uh, and these things are will hold a pretty good amount of power from what I've seen. Um, the advantage is you don't really, really need any trick machine work. You just need two slick surfaces, good fasteners, and you're good to go. Uh, that's uh, uh, that's how they work. The downside is is it does impreg uh, leave a little bit of a blemish in the cylinder head when you pull it off. That you before you reuse, uh, you may need to skim that out. Usually not a big deal. A few thousandths and it's slick, brand new. It's really not an issue at all, but. Some people kind of get hung up on that. Um, now I got a cheat sheet here, so I cover everything. After that, uh, we have uh, O-rings, um, and when you say O-rings, you can mean a lot of different things because um, there's, a, there's, you know, there's a ton of different ways to do it. In my opinion, some right, some wrong, uh, but there's different size wires. You can hang it out farther shallower depending on what you want to do receiver grooves no receiver grooves it can get really complicated but uh, essentially what an o-ring is is a, a wire uh, that is uh, embedded in the block or in the cylinder head it can be either way and uh, in most cases especially the way we do it here it pushes a copper gasket into a receiver groove either from above or or below uh, it can go either way um, and, th and this is kind of uh, the next level past uh, all these and the O-ring situation will hold a ton of power. Um, the negatives are you've got to do machine work to do it. It's not something you're going to do in your backyard. Uh, and, uh, you know, once it's in there, it's kind of in there. Um, fixing an incorrectly O-ring block can be a job. Um, because uh, it, it's, it's fairly invasive and uh, you may have to take a lot of metal off to, to get back to zero. Um, uh, so it's one of those things you kind of want to make sure you do it right if you're going to do it. Uh, but they're, they're an excellent uh, uh, means of holding a bunch of cylinder pressure. Now, um, with all that being said, there's other uh, factors that come into play when uh, trying to manage and contain cylinder pressure. Um, one of which is the thickness and composition of the cylinder head deck. Um, if you have a, uh, a, so say a factory aluminum head or something, the metal itself may not be the strongest thing in the world compared to a high dollar aftermarket casting. And very likely the deck is uh, thinner, and obviously, therefore, it's going to distort with a bunch of power and move. Um, that can be, can be problematic for obvious reasons. Uh, also, a lot of factory heads have a lot of water holes. Some heads more than others. These are LS heads, factory ones. As you can see, they got water holes everywhere. Um, and obviously, those are failure points and weakness points. You have a big hole here. It's easier for this section here to move. Um, uh, now that can be fixed uh, in some cases with dry decking, which we do a lot of here. Um, obviously, that dry decking is where you weld all these holes up, and that ties everything together. It can't move around anywhere near as much. Also, it's a safety deal, in my opinion, because if you blow um, a head gasket of any sort, and you have a lot of water right there. Well, obviously that could get really bad really quick. Um, nobody wants to be going 180 mile an hour and have it all of a sudden uh, pour down rain. Well, that's essentially what's going to happen if you push 
certain types of head gaskets on certain types of heads uh, unexpectedly. Um, you're going to have water everywhere and that's not going to be fun. Um, dry decking for the most part fixes that uh, and, and in my opinion makes it a lot safer regardless of head gasket type. Um, another thing that is not discussed that much but uh, I think it's uh, an important thing is the cylinder head architecture and what I mean by that is a lot of factory heads um, are uh, adequate for what they're trying to do remember that what the factory is trying to do with the thing and what you're trying to do with it are not usually not the same thing um, so it's accurate for what or it's adequate for what they're trying to do but maybe not for you and where the architecture thing can come into play is a lot of times out here on the, the outside of the head, a factory style head will be really skinny out here, right? You can see how thin this thing is on the outer edges of the head gasket, right? Whereas racing heads uh, in a lot of situations are not. You can see how much thicker this dude is out here, right? So now we're holding the head gasket from a much higher vantage point in a lot of ways and this just inherently makes the cylinder head more rigid and less likely to deflect and deform and therefore uh, lose clamp. Um, so like I say a lot of times I think the shape of the head itself plays a big role in, uh, in how much a, a, a cylinder head will hold and also your aftermarket heads are uh, often made of better metal, harder uh, and the deck surfaces are much thicker, right? Um, uh, fasteners uh, can't be overlooked. Um, factory fasteners are adequate for their task, generally. Um, but when you start adding a bunch of boost, nitrous, or whatever, it's very easy to overstress um, what they're capable of managing. Um, for obvious reasons. The factory materials are inexpensive, they torque to relatively low amounts, and they, they stretch, um, especially when you put the power to them, they just push the head up uh, in some situations, which can be a problem. Um, this can be alleviated a lot of different ways. You can put better, higher quality fasteners on there that torque to more. The torquing to more is really a function of the, 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 the metallurgy involved Torquing it more isn't really what's doing the job, and I don't feel like. You have to torque it more because the stud is more rigid. It's a spring, and you have to load it harder. Um, and uh, anyhow, those better quality studs don't give as much, and they hold the head a whole lot better, right? Also, in some cases, you can oversize the, the stud. You can put bigger ones in. In some situations, you're going to put more of them in. Um, and this is where the cylinder or the uh, design of the engine comes into play. Some engines are inherently far better at holding head gaskets than others, right? Um, Fords, uh, although they're great motors, uh, have in, you know historically had more trouble holding a head gasket than a small block Chevrolet. Uh, even the, your Windsor based Fords have a half inch stud, but there's a pretty good jump between these two holes and the farther you have to hold the farther you, ha you have between the studs obviously the more room you have for deflection um, so inherently a Ford uh, or the Gen 1 LS as some people call it uh, has this problem uh, same with the LS they're virtually in the same boat LS uh, studs are actually smaller than the Windsors um, so one of the upgrades sometimes people do is to go to a, uh, a half inch stud or larger and a or even a, a much higher quality stud uh, will do the same thing and it's kind of tip or tack because there's expense either way um, but that uh, it, okay if you contrast that to say a small block Chevrolet those things have five head bolts per cylinder uh, and they're all very close to the cylinder uh, perimeter wise and for somebody who came up as a Ford guy, it was uh, it's a, you know years ago it was kind of an eye-opening experience as to how well a small block Chevrolet, even with a flimsy deck 
and a light head could hold just about anything, it seemed like. Um, and the reason for that is the bolts are so close together. They're just less work they got to do. Even though they don't torque as much, it's just, it's just an e a better situation. Now, uh, that being said, that can create other problems too. You get your, you get your studs real close to the cylinders, you can have issues there. Um, it's more difficult to oversize them if you need to, and they're bad to break into the cylinder, it's just other issues. Um, but, all in all, uh, some motors are better at this than others, is what I'm getting at. Um, assembly practices. Uh, this is probably self-explanatory, but it does cause problems from time to time. Uh, essentially, how you bolt this thing together. Are you, is everything clean when you put your head gaskets on? Is, uh, is this, the machine work adequate? Is, it, is the head straight? Is uh, the deck straight? Is, is the surface finish adequate? If you got an MLS gasket, you better have a pretty slick surface finish or else it's not going to seal no matter what you do. Um, so they, they require that. Um, some other stuff isn't as intolerant to a little um, surface uh, imperfections, but as a rule, it needs to be right. Um, the fastener itself has to be clean. Um, a pet peeve of ours around here is uh, people that assemble stuff with uh, sloppy habits, uh, and the, the, you know when you go to torque something that's all dirty, then who knows how it's really pulling, right? Uh, and that's a that's a common failure point. The other thing is the torque itself. Um, you can people can bring in here a hundred torque wrenches uh, for me to test, and I about guarantee you about half of them aren't right, and probably twenty five of them aren't even close to being right. Um, it's a very, very common problem, um, especially if you have a torque wrench that's been handed down from generation to generation, has been laying around the tool, toolbox for 50 years. There's a pretty good chance that wrench is, is out of whack. Not a big deal, as long as you know that, but that can lead to a lot of problems, either in under-torquing stuff or in over-torquing. That can be just as bad. Um, and all this stuff can, can lead to failures. Now, um, with that being said, uh, nowadays people seem to be uh, on a quest to have the ultimate um, uh, head gasket that can't be blown, and uh, it's just failure proof. Well, what I would say to that is, be careful what you wish for, um, because sometimes uh, a failure point is not a bad thing, uh, and this this goes into the last part or that I'm going to discuss about uh, cylinder head sealing as far as uh, importance, and in my opinion, it's the most important part, and that is this thing: you tune up. Your tune up trumps everything else that we've discussed. It's more important by far. And almost all the time when you see an engine failure of some sort, especially in the type of racing we do, which is drag racing and high boost and so, such and such, the tune-up is everything. And uh, if you get this wrong, the motor's going to eat itself. And in short order, uh, every single time. There is no exception to this, right? The better your head gasket is, the more it gnaws on the bottom. Uh, and that's just uh, uh, just, a, just a fact. Um, sometimes if you make a mistake in your tune-up or whatever, it's good to let a little something out. Um, and, uh, and that letting a little something out will if you're smart, we'll tell you something. Hey, we ain't got it right yet. Something is, is pissed off. Um, and it's just simple as that. So, my word of wisdom there would be, when you're blowing head gaskets, the first place you need to look is that tune-up. And especially if you're relying on some of the stuff I see on the internet here uh, about, about tune-ups um, can be very misleading uh, and, and just flat out wrong. 
um, and and uh, be careful where you get your information from on, on some of these uh, on some of this stuff. Now, when it comes to tune-ups, we need to discuss that. In my opinion, uh, tune-up can mean two different things. It can mean the tune-up that you enter in here. You type away on these on the keyboard, and you send this tune-up in. All right, well that's one tune-up, and it's very common for that tune-up to be the source of all your problems. You're shoving head gaskets out, whatever, right? Uh, I would say in most cases that is the problem, right? All right, well that's one type of tune-up. The other type of tune-up is what the motor's actually seeing, right? The motor doesn't give a damn what what you typed in here and sent in there, right? It knows what fuel injection actually does, right? And that's where this can get really complicated. Just because you told the fuel injection to do one thing doesn't necessarily mean that's what happened, right? Uh, and it's very important for people to understand this. Now, I've got an excellent example of this. Um, and I was maligned quite a bit by the crowd that we're going to talk about at the end of the video for this very situation. Um, uh, a, a year or so ago, maybe a couple years ago, we had Brad Edwards' car at uh, a race, I think it was Georgia, and we had just freshened the motor and uh, got it all back together. Brad goes out, makes a pass, comes, I'm there with a handful of cars, and he comes up to me a few minutes, or a little bit later, and he says, yeah, we've, uh, we've shoved the head gasket out. Here you go. Copper head gasket O-ring. Blown it out. Now, this is a car that, mind you, doesn't do this, right? We pour up all kinds of stuff, but it generally doesn't ever hurt head gaskets. But it did this day. Brad is wondering what happened. At the time, I had a new assembly guy. He says, well, maybe, maybe your assembly guy didn't get it torqued right. And I said, okay, well, anything's possible. I guess we'll put another head gasket on it and go out there and try it again. It didn't hurt anything other than that. Uh, so we put another head gasket on it, go out. Here we go. Number two. Same thing. So at this point, we realize, okay, well, something is, uh, something's ticked off. So we have him put fuel in that hole, pull timing. Don't know why we need to do that. Tune-up's the same. Doesn't change anything. Uh, and if I recall correctly, uh, we ended up blowing like six or seven sets of head gaskets uh, before this was all over with. Okay, so that weekend we never found the problem. We just kept shoving head gaskets out. Frustrating weekend to say the least. But shortly after, Brad was doing routine maintenance on his car. And he calls me up and he says, well, I think I found the problem. He went to check his uh, battery and the negative pole was loose. Not the cable, but loose in the battery. So he takes it apart, and inside it was completely loose from this. And because of that, current can't flow properly. And here you see this, the cable is completely melted, right? Black and burnt. Here's your problem, right? So long story short, Brad changes batteries. And off we go. Problem's fixed. Now it's back to running like it should. And, you know, uh, now the car runs 360s with a with a 40 thousandths thick O-ring uh, in a very tenuous situation. You wouldn't think it would work, but it holds 60 pounds, no problem, if the tune-up's right. If we screw up, guess what? Pushing something out. Right. Now, 
moral of the story here is if we had the ultimate head gasket in this situation and it didn't do that what would have happened before the weekend was over it would have shoved the rods out the bottom there's no doubt about it it's just a matter of time we're lucky it didn't do it anyhow but if we'd had a head gasket better that's what would have happened i'll guarantee it so what i'm getting at here is be careful what you wish for uh when you uh when you're dealing with head gasket problems and the first thing first place you need to look is either the tune-up or the actual tune-up which is, which is what's actually happening because of this the injectors aren't running right who knows what the ignition's doing essentially we're running the motor super lean we just don't know it right or, or something's going on and it's all pissed off right so what i'm getting at is there's a whole lot of factors involved in this stuff besides your tune-up besides your fasteners besides your head gaskets and nine times out of ten that's where you need to look first period right sealing something up better up top can just send stuff out the bottom without a doubt and the other thing is this in a lot of cases even with an excellent uh, o-ring situation or cylinder sealing situation if you make a mistake or, or something's not right something's going wrong something's going to give up top regardless uh, I could show you situation over and over and over again where the shit just simply torches out it just blows a hole doesn't even have to be at the head gasket right uh, this is very common uh, it'll torch anywhere it's coming out and it, it's going to take chunks of this that and the other I would still rather do this than send the rods out the bottom but what I'm getting at is even with an excellent cylinder head situation or gasket situation you can still blow anything I don't care what it is you can you can you can tear it up and uh, I've seen this over and over and over that's just how it is uh, now uh, I've seen some stuff referred to with o-rings as far as the gap goes on pretty much every big meltdown torch situation I've ever seen with o-ring the one thing that you can almost always count on matter of fact I don't know if I've ever seen it any other way it's never at the seam the damage is never at the gap in the o-rings right all right uh, that brings us to the the uh, crux of the, the reason for this video and that is uh, because I feel like I have been unfairly maligned by a, a business other than mine and uh, I'm I'm gonna d name names in in, uh, in this because I'm frankly quite sick of it uh, and that business is TK and performance and specifically three people from that business Kevin Mullins Sammy Tompkins and Eric Scarborough um, recently they made a post about o-rings how terrible they were yada yada and the one the picture that they showed uh, showed a somebody's sloppy o-ring work where the seam was basically uh, almost uh, just smashed together almost overlapping just kind of sloppy and they led people to believe in their comments that that came from this shop well it didn't there's no way because the way we do o-rings here and it's the way it's been done for years and years and years here that's not how they're done we cut the wire and then the wires are ground on either a valve grinder or a ring grinder until they're perfectly square and then tapped in in many cases you can hardly even see the seam it's, it's sometimes it's almost hard to see where the where one one end of the ring is and the other end stops it's difficult to find it so what the pictures they have I don't know where they got them from but they didn't come from here the, the, and that's that's nothing new this is the way that I've done this for probably close to 20 years now the same way nothing's any different even in my earliest days using o-rings I would grind them on a cutoff wheel right 
So this, the result's the same. It's going to look clean. So anyhow, I don't know where they got this mess from, but they, they have uh, unfairly impugned me with their nonsense. And I'm frankly sick of it. And uh, I think it's despicable. And I'm not going to stand for it anymore. Um, also, in that same thread, there was an ex-customer of mine who made some comments that I think could be very misleading. I'm not going to name them because uh, I don't think these guys are really that malicious. I think that, that they've been abused by a lot of shops in the past and uh, and frankly they're just ignorant of the the mechanical hows and what's of all this and, and uh, I don't think they understand what they're doing. But I, did, I have to clear my name here a little bit. <clears throat> if you're talking to these guys and they try to run down my O-rings I want you, I have pictures. Okay, back up a little bit. Uh, we were, we built a motor for them, or repaired a motor, I guess you could say. Come from another shop, and we improved it, O-ringed it, such and such. We go to the track, uh, and almost immediately, with hardly any boost in it, we have a head gasket failure. Well, we get to looking, and the head is cracked almost from one end to the other right well after we tear this thing apart it's pretty obvious why it's unbelievably thin uh, and I mean in some places it's less than 50 thousandths thick so I call the cylinder head manufacturer and to their credit they totally owned up to it they said yeah uh, that head we found out probably best served on a naturally aspirated motor I thought that was a little bit odd considering it was literally called the turbo head. But uh, anyhow, they did own up to the fact that it had a problem and uh, wouldn't work in that application. So I thought that was the end of it. But apparently these guys are so clueless as to how this works that they, uh, they still seem confused about the whole issue. But anyhow, I'm posting up the images of the broken head so that you can see for yourself when somebody tells you otherwise. Here's the heads. Here's the problem. The only thing I can't really take a good picture of is I don't have the heads anymore. If I did, I'd saw them in half. You could see how thick they were. But you can almost tell from the pictures. They're unbelievably thin where they cracked on top through, the, through where, the, where they bolt down. Um, that being said, now to the, uh, on to the most ironic part of all of this, this crowd that constantly... Um, derides me for pretty much anything I do uh, and uh, goes on about their top fuel hoops and such and such. For the longest time I didn't know what they were. Uh, and in all disclosure, Kevin Mullins used to work for me and HED, by some strange coincidence, used to be located in the exact same place that TKM is now. So you need to understand that to understand what I'm about to tell you. Um, so for the longest time, I didn't really know what top fuel hoops were. So occasionally we'd have somebody call and ask us, can you do top fuel hoops? Well, I don't know. I don't know what they are. Because I, I assumed they were a gas-filled hoop, which is used in some motorsports. And I had assumed that that's what they were doing. Well, recently, I've become a little bit suspicious about these things uh, and what they were. And then, even more recently, they posted some information about exactly what they are. And lo and behold, they were my idea. I literally came up with this years and years ago before there was any such thing as TKM Performance. I'm sure that I discussed this at least with their benefactor down there. And most likely I would have discussed it with Mullins himself because I, at the time, would have had no reason not to. Um, and I can prove this because I've discussed it with multiple racers that I still deal with to this day. And, uh, and I had discussed it with them and they are willing to, uh, to verify that if anybody doubts. But that's just a, that doesn't really matter at this point. Um, but I just find it ironic that after all this, that's the truth of the matter. 
But anyhow, I hope we've uh, covered cylinder head sealing a little bit better and gone over some of the basics and the problems involved in it. And uh, that's enough for today.